Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another part of my tutorial series on Kerbal Space Program. We have a contract to perform a docking in orbit around the around Kerbin, and we've already launched a spacecraft known as Danger Mouse. Now we're going to send a spacecraft to reach it. Now, Danger Mouse is designed to be a, uh, a lab that orbits the moon. And its counterpart, the cunningly named Danger Cat, will uh, dock with it and land on the moon. So we're going to take the lander that we took to Minmus. We're just going to change it. So I'm moving these tanks to this side because I kind of want to stick the fuel tanks. I want to only have two fuel tanks in this final stage because I don't need... Oh, wait a second. If I do that, I'm going to have issues with the doors, am I? Yeah, I'm gonna have to stick it around here. Yeah, the doors on the experiment are purely cosmetic, whereas the doors on that service bay are all too physical and real and have been known to break apart spaceships. So well, I'm gonna do it that way. Let's get rid of these legs. We're gonna do the legs in a slightly different pattern. So we still only have the the micro legs. Yeah, just checking. No, we, we have not unlocked anything else. So I'm going to put those there in two times symmetry mode. Try to line them up there. And it's put them on there. If I grab this and put them on there. Yeah, my symmetry didn't work just right. So if that happens, take off the extra ones and try moving them. It may actually fix it. Alternatively, you can try adjusting the symmetry mode using the F key, which switches between parent part and uh, current part. Uh, regardless, uh, I think we've got all that. I'm going to take a look in my service bay. Now, we've got rid of regular liquid fuel and oxidizer, but we're going to need to dock this spacecraft. And to dock it, we need reaction control systems. Reaction control systems use monopropellant rather than regular fuel. So this is a different fuel type, which you also need to carry. Now, the capsule actually comes with a small amount of monopropellant, but I'm going to load this thing up with a, a couple of these spherical tanks. I have the other options, but I think this sh should be fine. Also, since we've unlocked the seismometer, I might as well put that in there so it, it is accessible for many generations of Kerbals to come. Okay, so let's also add a an antenna to this because transmitting stuff is always cool. There, stick that on. And now I think about it, I'm going to need parachutes, or rather i got to get rid of this parachute and replace it with the docking node, right? So I'm using this small one, the Clampotron Jr., which is supposed, supposedly designed for small things like probes, but you can quite adequately use it for a lander of this size, it's slightly lighter. It does have a greater tendency to wobble if you accelerate too hard, but other than that, we'll be fine. So there, attach some parachutes on the side, solar panels, and I think that's our lander all set. Oh, although, actually, we do need to add the reaction control systems. Now, the reaction control systems will allow us to perform the fine maneuvers that we need for docking. And we need to balance them, or sit them near the center of mass of the spacecraft so that everything's balanced. And to do that, I have detached the rest of the rocket. Now, they're under command and control, and in this case, I'm going to use... See, I want them to line up with that center of mass there. We're going to use four-way symmetry, and hopefully that is in a reasonable position. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. First time. So I just put a ring of four of these. You can technically get away with three, although that can cause issues. There, and we'll put that on, rotate it into position. Now that is looking... That is looking like it's ready to go. The only thing I want to add is launch clamps, because I keep forgetting to add launch clamps, and this thing ends up sticking to the pad and having all sorts of embarrassing problems. Okay, I think that is our spacecraft. We just need to assign crew. Now, this is a science mission, so Ali Kerman, the Kerbal we rescued from orbit, will join us on this mission. Okay, we are on the pad and we are ready to go. Ali Kerman is an expert in rendezvous because, well, she was rendezvoused with. So what we do, of course, is we target the thing we want to rendezvous with, which is Danger Mouse. I purposely put it in a 100-kilometer orbit, so I would have space above and below it. 
but we're just going to use time acceleration to bring it around and let it get close to where I think, so, so that it will be very close to us when we actually launch an orbit here. So I'm thinking that's probably pretty close to where we want to be. Okay, throttle to 100% and launch. Oh, launch. Oh, there, that worked. I mean, nothing exploded and nothing stuck to the launch pad. We just have a few meters further to go to get actually into orbit. Okay, so we're just going to go straight up more or less. This vehicle will fly very similarly to the, the Black Watch that we previously tried, which means you don't want to be hugely aggressive in your gravity turn. If you get as far as 45 degrees, you know, around 10 kilometers, that is too much. You should be at most at 60 degree gravity turn by the time you reach 10 kilometers and you want to be very careful controlling it. This thing, yeah, we're just going upwards. I'm holding it at about 95 degrees, sorry, at 85 degrees, pardon me. There are 90 degrees in a right angle, not 100. Oh dear, what I'm thinking sometimes. Yeah, uh, using the probe core on top to, of course, provide stability control that we need. I don't have anything aerodynamic up there. If you want, you could add a nose cone on the front of that and then detach it once you got into space. But I think that we're going to do fine regardless on here. Yeah, this rocket is really, really easy to fly, other than the fact that you need a steep gravity turn. It doesn't go supersonic until much higher altitude, so you don't have to worry about throttling back. If you have a rocket that is going over 300 meters per second, below about 10 kilometers, then you should seriously think about toning back its acceleration just a little. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to tell. Each rocket is different. Anyway, we're getting ready to ditch these stages and continue our flight into orbit. So aiming for 60 degrees, and I think I get pretty close to it. There, we could put parachutes on that. So let's see how our orbit is actually looking. The trick is the apple up. Oh, 49 degrees. That is steeper than I would like. So I'm going to make a serious effort to flatten this orbit out. Make sure that we don't ascend too quickly. Ideally, you want this around 45, maybe. Yeah, 45 seems good. If it's below 40, you are in serious trouble. Just uh, try to keep it between 40 to 50. The idea is that if, you, if you're... Uh, time to apoapse increases too quickly, it's a sign that you're going upwards too fast. And similarly, if it's start dro starting dropping, it's a sign that you are too flat and don't have enough thrust to get into orbit. So this is a nice kind of balance for most rockets. There certainly are exceptions to all of these rules here. Anyway, I'm also noticing that the spacecraft that we're trying to dock with is moving overhead, and therefore we are going to be playing catch up. Now, because we know at this point that we are going to be, going to be playing catch up on it, I know that the target orbit that I want to put this into, it has to be below the 100 kilometer orbit of that object. If it was still well behind us in the orbit, we would be aiming for a higher orbit so that we would move more slowly and let it catch up. But one way or another, you know, you have to make this decision during the ascent what your apoapse during this initial burn is going to be because you're then going to attempt the rendezvous. And being in an approximate, in a good orbit to start with is kind of good, I guess. It's, you know, advantageous. Okay, how are we doing here? There, see, 45 seconds. I have flattened this trajectory out beautifully here. This is going to be a very efficient launch. Not that I actually needed a hugely efficient launch, but all the same, it's nice to see the, the numbers actually lining up. You see, now the time to apoapse is rising very, very quickly because we are getting very, very close to orbital velocity here. So yeah, I'm going to let this get up to about 95 kilometers. So that will be five kilometers below the target object. And the rule for rendezvous is that for every one kilometer you are below the target, you will catch up on them by about seven kilometers per orbit. And the reverse of that is true. For every one kilometer above the target you are, they will catch up on you by about seven kilometers. But we're getting ready to cut out 95 and throttle down to zero. Okay, we are on a 
good trajectory to orbit already. We have still we still have fuel in our main stage here, and we're just going to continue the ascent here. Yeah, 66 kilometers. Look, this is pretty good. And wow, I did not have much fuel to spare here. I think I judged that whole design pretty well, I must say. Look, we even have a a periaps node or a periaps marker on the other side, so we're pretty close to being in orbit already. So just still inside the upper atmosphere, and therefore I have to use physical time acceleration, which will limit me to four times regular speed. Once you're above 70 kilometers, you can switch to regular time acceleration and go hog crazy if you like, other than those limits that are put in place by the atmospheres. Uh, rather, sorry, by the, the altitude. Okay, so we're gonna get here, circularize our orbit just a little. I don't think we even need a maneuver node for this one. We know that the acceleration of the rocket should be pretty solid and we know the kind of altitude we're going for. So I am just going to I'm going to do this by ha by uh you know by estimation. Actually no, I'm just going to point the spacecraft along the prograde vector which is there on the nav ball for everyone to see. It's probably the vector uh marker you will be using most since it's pretty much required to get things into orbit. Okay. Now, I want to fire the engine and I want to bring the periaps up a little, but you know what, I think it's probably a good idea to ditch this spacecraft while it's still touching the, touching the atmosphere. So this giant first stage, I don't think we need it. Let's throw that away. Uh, no. Yes, now that thing will fall back to be consumed by the kraken that is in the ocean or whatever. Or perhaps it will wash up in some beach and be found by somebody with a GoPro attached and they will post all the awesome footage to the internet. Anyway, uh, bringing the periaps up, we're going to just try and get as circular an orbit as possible. We're going for 95 kilometers either way. Uh, and I'm going to use radial thrust to try and, you know, basically adjusting my thrust either inwards or outwards to try to keep, make sure that the maneuver node, or sorry, the periaps that I'm sitting at is as close to my current position as possible. I think that's us. That looks pretty good. And we're going to get a 20 kilometer encounter already on the on the target object, which is pretty good. I mean, 20 kilometers, you could almost brute force. OK, first step to doing it properly, we are going to make an inclination correction maneuver. So we're about 0.8 degrees off. I'm going to get that down to point zero. Now since that's the, that's the descending node, right, that means that I'm going down and passing their, their orbit. I need to go up and up on the nav ball is north. Actually, you, there's an, a normal vector there. That's the normal vector you want to be firing along for inclination changes up or down. There's Well, there's a, another one on the other side called the anti-normal. Now all I'm going to do is once I start getting close to this node here that tells us the uh, inclination difference, I'm just going to fire the engine slowly and what will happen is that will get pushed further and further out as we are correcting. If you uh, pass through the node then the opposite will happen, it will get pushed It'll get pushed away from you one way or another. I'm just wanting to make sure that I do it before I reach the node so that I'm reducing inclination carefully so that I can get it right on as I cross the planes. It's, uh, it's not like Ghostbusters, it really is very important that you cross the streams as accurately as possible. That's 0.2 degrees now. Also note that if the nav ball is not in orbit mode, you need to possibly correct it for most of these orbital maneuvers. Okay, so we're going to create our maneuver node here and start searching for a, a basically a transfer orbit that brings us close. Now, that looks pretty close on the surface. I've crossed the orbit just a touch and we get these ones here. Oh, now I've gone too far. You just want to touch the orbit and no more. So I'm just trying to get that. I want to see two sets of maneuver nodes, or two sets of encounters, right? Now I'm going to drag this and drag it around and look for points where they seem to be converging. You see how the purple ones are getting closer and closer, right? So that's 27 kilometers. We can get closer than that, right? Let's see. Down to, wait, wait a second. What's that? Down to 20 kilometers. Keep going. 
So we're just delaying this transfer maneuver. 15. Let's, oh, and I grabbed the encounter. I grabbed the maneuver node. I should have been a little more careful. The maneuver nodes are a really nice thing to experiment with. However, when you're using them, it does still happen that it's a very busy piece of UI and it's quite common that you actually hit the wrong slider. Okay, down to... We're down to pretty close distance, like, look at that, 6.6 kilometers. Again, you can brute force these things. We have plenty of fuel here. If you want to travel 6.6 kilometers, you can do it at 50 meters per second. And it'll take you just over two, me uh, two minutes. And that only takes like 100 meters per second of delta V, you know. Kerbal Space Program is rather forgiving in that respect. Okay. Just looks like 2.5 kilometers and 2.1. Okay, we should. I can't move this node through this guy, through me here, because what'll happen is it'll then register the. It, it won't change the orbit number, so it'll suddenly jump backwards in time. Okay, I'm just making some adjustments here. Oh, so that's not right. Don't want to do that. I think. I think, I think. Let's just make sure everything's okay there. That is 100 kilometers. Let's move this forwards. 98. Yeah, you know what? I think I just need to move this thing forwards in time till we fly past this orbit at exactly the right moment. 1.1. Okay. I'm just... I, I, you know, I'm trying to avoid the temptation of just getting close and then brute forcing the whole thing. Okay, getting closer. 0.6. Thanks to time acceleration, this is going faster. 0 0.4. 0 0.2. 0 0.4. Go backwards. Point. Oh, that's pretty good. 0.1. 100 meters. 100 meters. I can live with 100 meters. Okay, so we have a 100 meter uh, encounter if we hit this maneuver. And from 100 meters, we can coast in using reaction control thrusters, which will be quite an experience if you've never tried docking before. Okay, you can see the object in the orbit in front of us there. We're pretty close and we are catching up relatively slowly. Uh, I think we're only catching up by maybe a, a few meters per second. Okay, just wait. I could, of course, be trying to collect scientific data by making uh, Ali Kerman hop out of the spacecraft and collect data from, like, the Badlands. I think this is the Badlands we're about to fly over. The Badlands are an area on Kerbin that is pretty much exactly opposite the position of the space center really if you if you imagine Kerbin as a globe you know as it actually is well on the opposite side of the globe from the Kerbal Space Center there's a, a biome that a lot of people forget about called the Badlands you'd be surprised how many people forget the Badlands even exist in Kerbal Space Program okay we're ready to make this maneuver and it's just four meters per second that's how small it is and that's us on course for an encounter with the the danger mouse, 2.2 kilometers, that is pretty darn adequate, I would say. Okay, well, we'll continue this in the next episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>